We're here in Berlin at the Block Show Europe and uh, one of the most influential guys from the Crypto Valley Switzerland is here with us. Uh, Mark, how are you doing? Yeah, hi there. All fine, all fine. And uh, what, are, what is actually, can you explain what you do exactly within the crypto space? Yeah, I'm in the space since uh, 2012 and involved in quite a few projects. So yeah, I wear several hats, always with a message like yours. Mm -hmm. uh, Momo Monders in the board of the Crypto Finance Group and uh, one of the co-founders of the Crypto Finance Conference. So my main mission is to bring traditional established investors into the new crazy crypto world. So you have good contacts within the Swiss banking uh, system, I presume? Yeah, I'm also in the board of a Swiss private bank where we also do crypto asset management. So uh, yeah, converging these two worlds, that's a little bit my main mission at the moment. And what, what are the challenges you, you yeah, uh, come up, uh, what are the challenges you meet actually uh, in, in, in building a bridge between these two worlds? I think we're still in the early days, so still quite a few people don't really understand the underlying power of this new technology. They still see more the speculative part and uh, let's say all the bad stories in the press, uh, which was exactly the same in the early days of the internet. So uh, I think we will see a very similar development. So and what, uh, what do you expect for the coming five to 10 years actually? Um I think crypto uh, will become mainstream. I mean, cryptocurrencies will become a valid alternative to quite a few existing systems and governments, especially the ones who own uh, their own currency but are not really reliable. And additionally, I think we will see a few real use cases based on the blockchain technology we will, which will really disrupt certain industries. So we're in the early days, but I think there will be now a few real use cases emerging out of this whole space, which is essential. Yeah, okay. And do you have, uh, actually in Switzerland, you have a quite regulated uh, framework in place eh? with, with also the different tokens, security tokens are actually uh, regulated. So um, it, took it, it took it lots of effort to get this framework done? Or? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Switzerland by nature is a decentralized state, politic-wise, so there's perhaps a better understanding for this blockchain-based technology and the decentralized approach. And that's perhaps one of the reasons why especially also Swiss government is quite open to this new technology. Mm -hmm. So it took not that, I mean, it took not that much effort or do, did it uh, took a lot of, uh, yeah, talks like in, in Holland, we know it's a polar model. So you have lots of talks with every, every stakeholder, but in Switzerland, maybe it could more smoothly. Yeah, there are also talks and I think there is also uh, lobbying behind the schemes, the scenes involved and also some existing financial service providers naturally want to preserve the status quo, mm. which is also the case when you have new innovation that uh, the existing players normally fear that they lose their business case. But I think in Switzerland we found a good, good combination of uh, attracting and implementing this new technology by not just throwing away everything we already have. Sounds good. And uh, what are actually the, what do you see, I mean, what is needed actually to, to build this more mature uh, industry? I think we need more, more uh, real use cases, so not just uh, announcements of big ICOs and some crazy fancy projects. We really need more real use cases with a, with a sustainable and long-term and valid business case behind. Do you maybe have an example in Switzerland or outside Switzerland? Yeah, I think there are certain areas where, uh, I mean, in the whole notary services space, in uh, the whole legal tech space where you could implement smart contract technologies uh, where I think we will see quite a big change in, uh, in a very short time. I think especially the cryptocurrency space is, is, is very complex, highly regulated. So there it's far more complex, but I think there are better and more straightforward uh, areas. And I think uh, logistics is definitely also a, a case where blockchain technology could make it far more efficient and transparent. And are you a trader yourself or are you more of a hodler or a I'm not really into trading. I was never involved in, uh, in uh, the speculative part. I mean, I was lucky to be in Bitcoin since 2012. But for me, it's really about the whole power of the technology behind. So I'm also following your uh, hat and more on the hodling side. All right. Do you have other coins like Bitcoin or? 
Yeah, I have quite a diverse uh, portfolio. Uh, I also uh, involved in a few companies where I normally like to have the equity behind the tokens. So the upside is a little bit different than just taking part of the regular token ICO. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, definitely allocating a substantial part uh, into this new crypto world. And how do you see a few questions? How do you see actually the development of venture capital? I mean, uh, can this tokenization model, or I must say the ICO, can it be an alternative for venture capital? Or is it just plus plus? I think part of it uh, will change a lot, but uh, as I also just mentioned uh, on, uh, on my panel, uh, if you have uh, a founding team behind, that's still the base of everything, right? Mm. You need smart founders, the right case, sizable market, good timing. And that uh, won't change just because you use now ICOs to raise money. Okay. Last question, uh, do you have a favorite uh, project or uh, maybe one you invested in uh, to, to, to chill? Yeah, I mean, well, one project I'm also involved there, but I think the, um, uh, the idea behind Swiss Realcoin is very, very appealing that you really have uh, Swiss real estate behind a token. So everybody talks about stable coins, and I think that's one of the really few examples where you can uh, yeah, invest in a tokenized model, but you have real assets behind. So that's definitely something uh, um, I like. That's why I also joined the, the, the project. Quite expensive coins. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> ultimately, uh, I think the whole industry and the existing and the new one, they will somehow com converge. Mm. And that's, uh, I think, a good example for that. Well, thank you very much, Mark, for your yeah, talk welcome. and all the best uh, with Crypto Valley. We should visit Crypto Valley, one of the most inspirational uh, areas in the crypto space, actually, in Europe and worldwide. So thank you.